Ricardo Calafiori. It looks as though <laughs> Arsenal are very close to finalising a deal to sign the Italian defender from Bologna. We need to talk a lot more about this and what position he could play for them and how it will all work out. And so for that, Gab, let's start with you. How close are Arsenal with this deal for the defender? Well, I, I think a deal is already in, in place in terms of uh, personal terms with the player. Um, I think it's squared away with uh, Bologna as well. But I think Arsenal want to get some ducks in a row. Um, I think they want to find a home for Jakub Kivior. Uh, also, obviously, another left-footed center back. Um, and obviously, you don't want to be in a situation where you, know, you need to shift a player uh, to, to, to balance your books or, or, or to allow you to go maybe sign other players you want to sign. Um, and everybody knows that because obviously that weakens your position. So I think that's generally been the, the stagging point until now. Obviously, there's been some other teams interested, Gab. Why is it that Arsenal is the one that Calafiori is going for? And how is it that Mikel Arteta is going to play this player? Where is he looking to play? Because obviously he can play centre-back, he can play left-back. Well, look, I mean, I think the... Uh, so, to answer the first part of your question, um, he's always had a thing for, for ball-playing left-footed centre-backs, right? Um, they are a currency in football, uh, if you will. I think they got on this one early. They, they got out ahead of everybody. Um, I think Calafiori likes the way Arsenal, uh, Arsenal play. It's an attractive uh, place to be. He's coming from, from, from Bologna, obviously. You know, nice city champions league team actually next season but obviously arsenal another level the lure of the premier league i think all these things uh come into it but i think they also presented a very clear plan um of what they would like him to do and i think what they would like him to do is essentially you know and we saw this during the season with the left back position where <clears throat> sometimes it was kiwi or sometimes it was tomiyasu they kind of moved away from um if you will the, the, the Zinchenko type uh, left back, Urien Timber, would have played there uh, had he not been injured. Uh, and, and I think they want a left back who's kind of more of a defender. And, uh, and I think Calafiori fits that. I would imagine there'll be some competition between Calafiori and, uh, and, and, and a fit Timber uh, to, play, to play left back or to, uh, or, or, or to back up as the left-sided center back position. Both are versatile players. Uh, and both can do that. I think he's a good fit from what you saw from him during the Euros, Craig. Oh yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's not crazy. He's a he's a good age, he's got good experience. He's obviously a very very good player, and he can play in a couple of different positions, at least at minimal. Uh, he can play in a couple of different positions, and he gives him the option, of course, if he wants to go to a back three. And we see this with teams sometimes. They start with a four, you know, sometimes when they have the ball. Uh, they go to a three and then back to a four, and it sort of switches in the modern game. Uh, as Gab rightly mentioned, you know, Timber was out for the bulky last season. Very good player, also very versatile. Uh, and they've got two really good centre halves, as it is, and, and Gabriel and, and Saliba. So I, I think this is good business again. And they tried this sort of Zinchenko. It, well, it was okay for a bit, and then Kevior came in because he was a little bit more solid. The, the Zinchenko thing, I think, what better when Xhaka was there and he could go and help him and then he left for Leverkusen and then Zinchenko started we started to see his deficiencies defensively he was all right when he stepped into the middle of the park could play some passes like he did at Manchester City and does for Ukraine but I think defensively he wasn't as solid as Arteta would like or knows he needs if they're going to win the Premier League and start really uh been in amongst the elite at all the big competitions so you know for that kind of money a player with that quality in this age, I think it's really, really good business. Yes, yeah, sliding on to what Craig's seen, you can see why Mikel Arteta is reported to have made him the top defensive target mm. for his team this summer. Well, they're just trying to mirror what they've done on the right hand side with Ben White. You know, so that Saka can, you know, Ben White lets Saka concentrate on going forward and, and doing his stuff in the final third. And they're going to try and do the same, whether it's Martinelli or anybody else on that left hand side. So it's. It's a complete mirror image of what Ben White's been doing. And it, on, on, on the face of it and on paper, it, it looks like a great fit. If, if effectively, you've got four, you could have four centre-backs across that back four. Although Ben White uh, predominantly has played uh, full-back, 
uh, for Arsenal, uh, he is effectively, when he signed from Brighton, he's a centre-half. Uh, so, he, he, and we've seen managers do that before. Uh, so it could effectively be... I think he's looking for more solidity to allow, you know, this midfield and very, you know, attacking front line that they have and wide players, and Stevie mentioned it, and the pacey players, just to give them more of a freedom to go and, uh, and play. And also, he, Ateta knows this, if you're going to win the Premier League or any league, you need a good squad. You need a deep squad. And this kind of signing helps that defensive position in terms of who's available. I mean, if Timber's fit and available and all these guys stay fit, that's, that's a good choice of defensive yeah. players that he can rotate. What, what they're able to do is, is squeeze the ball a lot more and a lot higher. Because effectively, they've got four defenders uh, and Rice. And so teams won't be able to get out. So when you have a deficiency, as Zinchenko, that can't really defend particularly well, then teams can get out down that side. A along with what Calafiore can do going forward, with what he does defensively, teams are going to struggle to get out and get at Arsenal. So before I get to you, Frank, on what this means for their title chances this year, just to go back to you, Gab, how highly do you actually rate Calafiore? Obviously, you've seen a lot of him with Bologna. I mean, he certainly had a tremendous season. He's he's part of kind of this this new generation of of Italian defenders. Scalvini, the other obvious one, who who wasn't at the Euros because he was injured. Uh, Bastoni, a little bit older as well. Um, who, you know, who are very comfortable on the ball, uh, which is kind of a kind of a new thing. And I think you can use him in different ways. He's also uh, he's also played defensive midfield uh, in in the past. You mentioned Granite Shaka there. Obviously, a left footer in that position. I'm not saying he can, you know, he's a Granite Shaka type necessarily, but he is a bit of a Swiss Army knife, uh, as is Timber. And, and you know, and what the boys mentioned uh, about, you know, the four center backs across the back line. Well, you know, I, I'm not saying he got the idea from him, but you know, his old boss Pep Guardiola, what he's been doing this season is playing four center backs across the back line, uh, plus Rodri in front of them. So I think there is a little bit of, I'm not saying he's copying him, but, 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 but you could say that there is maybe a bit of a mini trend, um, you know, certainly between Arsenal and, uh, and City in that sense. All right, Frank, what does this do for their title chances? Can they finally end City's reign? How much does this elevate them getting a player like Calafiori in the back line there? It makes it make them better, for sure. For sure, because um, they needed that, that option on the left side, where they were a little bit weaker than, uh, than other uh, position, positionings. And uh, it gives a lot of options to Arteta. Arteta learned his lesson, I think, when uh, two years ago Saliba got injured. Um, I think he wants to keep the white Saka pair uh, working very well on the right side. And uh, in case Saliba or um, Gabriel get injured, uh, Calafiori can uh, can come in the middle of, uh, in the middle and, and play centre back, but having him on the left side brings something special. And as Stevie said, you know, if he can pair on the left side with Martinelli like uh, White does with Saka, ah, that's a big strength, and uh, uh, the power can come from everywhere. Um, as Craig also mentioned, uh, you need a squad. You don't, you you cannot think about oh, okay, I got Gabriel and Saliba, and that's enough. And if, if one of them get injured, you're in trouble. Therefore, he has a backup, and that's, that's a big, big option. I think it's a very good catch. Is this and the he's going to make them much better. Sorry. Is it the year? Uh, is, it, is it the year Guardiola leaves Man City? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's like... <laughs> you know, De Bruyne had a patchy season injury last year, came in, looked pretty good, then looked a bit leggy again at the end of the FA Cup final. Champions League, he's been a key player for them. There's talk about Alvarez possibly going to Spain. He, he you know, Julian Alvarez, and you know, you think, oh, well, you know, people were just watching him. Well, he's a squad player. Well, he maybe he doesn't play every week, but he played a lot last year and he covers a lot of positions. He's a very, very good player. So it just depends who sort of comes and goes, uh, if anybody. Uh, clearly, the bookies, I think, are right. The City are still favourites, but, you know, with Liverpool making a change of manager and a lot of backroom staff going, you just don't quite know what's going to happen there and there is no doubt Arsenal are I think going to be the team to go again but until they dethrone this City side 
And we'll still ask the question, I suppose, about you know, spending money in these positions is, you know, Martinelli was a little bit inconsistent at times last year, uh, and he did make some changes in that position. Trossard did a very good job uh, coming in. Will he look to back up those positions? And will he look to back up, and is there any money available to go out and replace uh, Kai Havertz with somebody who's playing every week there? You know, Ivan Tony was mentioned last year, there have been, been others. I just don't know what the financial situation is for them to do that. But I do feel that if they are going to beat City, it's not just the back of the field and the midfield. They're going to have to look, at, I think, maybe the left-hand side and definitely somebody who's going to do what people get paid the biggest bucks to do, put the ball in the back of the net. Stevie, they've been so close. Yeah, I do. I think this, this is the year, you know, and, I, and I, part of my argument is history. You know, Man City broke all records by winning it four times in the trot last year. Five times in the trot. I mean, every, everything's against that. Uh, and as Craig was saying, people like De Bruyne, Silva, you know, can they go again and be as good as, the, as they've been over the last five or six seasons? Whereas you've got Arsenal coming along, you've got the signing of the Calafiori, you've got that desire, that hunger is absolutely going to be there. Uh, yes, the one question would be the Havert situation, but the truth is, taking part of the season, he came up trumps, came up big time scoring goals. So if he can, if he can do that again this season, then Arsenal absolutely are the team that can knock City off the perch. What do you think, Gav? I mean, look, uh, they're certainly up there. I, I don't think this team is necessarily complete. Uh, I know a lot of people think that, you know, they should go out and look to sign another uh, another centre forward for, I mean, Stevie just mentioned Havertz there, maybe an alternative, maybe uh, an upgrade on, on Eddie and Ketia off the bench. Personally, I'd like to see them pick up another uh, central midfielder simply because, you know, Jorginho's a, re a year older in certain games. I don't know you necessarily want him out there. Um, I think Declan Rice does his best work when he's free to, 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 to sort of bomb forward uh, alongside Odegaard as opposed to when he's just anchoring and has to be purely defensive. And obviously Thomas Partey, you know, injuries last season, other questions off the pitch. You know, maybe somebody off the bench uh, who, can, who can fill that role. Um, but, I, you know, maybe if they move Emil Smith-Rowe, they'll have the funds for that. Uh, but I, I think we're talking tweaks. I mean, I think they are in a position, certainly, where, where I mean, they have to be, to, to take that final step and, and challenge City. What else do you think it says, Frank, that we're seeing players like this where there's the likes of Real Madrid and Juventus reported to be interested in his services and it is Arsenal that they're choosing? Interested of which player, sorry? With Calafiori, he's had a lot of interest from some other oh. big clubs and it's Arsenal, it seems, that he really what? wants to go to. I, I, I think, um, well, unless you, um, you're very, um, very much wanted by uh, Real Madrid, I think Arsenal is a very good option. Um, there is a bright future coming up. Um, you know that you're going to play. Um, you know that it's ambitious. You play in the best league in the world for me. And uh, so you have to go. So, of course, uh, you have other clubs interested. It can be also about money. But he's 22. He's very young. He has to be ambitious in the way of winning silver, silverwares and not earning money. And uh, I think it's a very good, uh, very good option. You have Manchester City. But uh, I think it's already taken. Um, you have Real Madrid. We already know that it's taken. You already have two players. Even Camavinga can play on the left side. So the competition is going to be harder for Calafiori, where he knows that his first choice for Ateta on the left side. And what is important for a player is to play, for me. That that's, would be the, the calculation that I would make. And uh, going to Arsenal, knowing that Arsenal is getting closer and closer every year, that it could be the year to win the Premier League. Well, that's a very good thought to, uh, to think about coming to, uh, to the Gunners. 